bus. Do you have one? <laughs> I do. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> We're just talking about it's time for to, to wind down, it's but time Tony to wind down. has no wine. I completely forgot. Oh, uh, how do you forget I wine, got, Tony? Well, because I, I was busy and and I was so excited about all the things I was going to talk about, and I then know. completely and Jer is away. That and is Jer true. Always brings me the the glass of wine. Yes, so. you have you have somebody that brings you wine every Friday at two. That's okay. like <laughs> I have somebody who brings me wine every day. So oh, yeah, you are you live a spoiled life. Um, yes, well, happy Friday, and we were just talking about happy offline um, that it's been a really busy week for both of us, and just lots going on, and uh, so we need to wind down. We do. We need to wind down. <laughs> I think the reality is I really won't be able to wind down until August 1st. Well, oh, no. July, July 22nd. You know, we have the whole baby coming in six weeks. My daughter's pregnant and then we have the wedding coming up. And so today's fitting, first fitting for wedding dress. So, yeah, there's, you know, there's always. But there's a little going. break in there in July. There's like four days in July. For somebody's birthday well, that doesn't matter it just will be together at the cottage and that That's will be time. that will be nice yeah i have little breaks in between so yeah welcome everyone thanks for joining us I'm this wine friday list. she's wine list i think we should take up a, a gofundme project yeah i mean <laughs> that's how that's how crazy this week has been i am wineless i am She's wineless, wineless. It's but, a very but i'm sad. very excited to be here it's a very sad it. situation I love this show. I love doing this show. It's the highlight of my week. Well, and, and what, I, what I love about it is you focus on customer experience and innovative ways to wow customers. And I'm focused on innovative ways to reach out and bring in new customers in the marketing side. And it's just cool because our topics always seem to gel so well. So um, yeah. I'm I'm excited because I found a really cool tool we're going to talk about that ties into the whole thing of, you know, what makes you special, what makes you unique, why should people work with you? Yeah, and uh, that maybe we should start with that, but I just yeah. want to go back to, to what you said, which is, you know, in the work that we do, I always say to people when I when I speak to a group, I'll say raise your hand if you're in marketing. And like about two people put their hand yeah. up. Right, uh, And then by the end of it, the whole room has their hand up because everything we do, we're not talking about customer experience in the sense of customer satisfaction. We're talking about deliberately designing experiences all through the customer journey. And that's why our stuff kind of melds so well together because it's all marketing. That's it's right. All, how do you market to your customers and get them to do more business with you? Yes. And if, yeah. okay, so right now, if you are watching and you are in marketing, we want you to just do a high five emoji or put a five, a number five for a high five. If you yeah. are in marketing, we want to see you put a five because uh, let's just see if everyone else agrees that they are also in marketing. We're um, <laughs> in marketing all the time. That's right. We are. Yeah. And and I know in marketing, and we talk about this all the time, is everybody thinks they're unique and it's very rare when somebody stands out and really is unique. And um, and I think it gets it gets harder and harder the more we're in our, and I, I think part of it is we're in our silo of our business. So mm -hmm. we tend to watch other people in our industry. So we can fall into the trap of, we see so many people doing things. Um, you can almost, you could either go the kind of copycat side that you start doing things too similar or the other way where you think everyone else is so much better and you can never get there. Um, and so, you know, I like the whole thing yeah. of, questioning why you why should people work with you um, yeah and that's and that's the question we start with with all of our clients is why you and and the reality is that the real question is why you and not them because you bring up a very interesting point and that's the word unique unique is a scary word um and 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 it's not really so much about being unique in the world, although I happen to believe we all are in some way. It's about right. differentiation, which means being strategically different from your competitors, standing out, or if you're kind of Cirque du Soleil or Uber or Airbnb, you completely disrupt an industry. But for the rest of us normal sure. folks, it's really about doing um, what we can in an innovative way 
to differentiate ourselves. So I, I like to say there's only two ways to be different. Either you do something that's never been done or you do what everybody else is doing differently. It's not any more complicated than that. that well, that's true. Well, that make, that simplifies it. And yeah. um, I got to give a shout out to D and Deb. We've got the D group here. D Ducart and Deb Lee. Hey, ladies, and cheers to you. D says it's never too early to have a cocktail. So no, I, who's that? <laughs> They're my friend. D Ducart, your new BFF. Yeah, new BFF. Um, I don't know D. So, but we should connect D. Yes, you should. Um, and uh, and Deb Lee says hello to to us. Hello, beautiful ladies. Uh -huh. Hi, I, I just put the word beautiful in there, Deb. <laughs> Deb says, hi, ladies. And I just said beautiful. So, yeah, because Deb's beautiful. You should see her. She's like a gorgeous supermodel. Um, Deb works on our team with us and does amazing things. And so hi to everyone. So what makes so when people try to figure out what is their unique differentiator? I mean, I'm always thinking of things like trying to come up with making a list of all the things we do, all the features, all the benefits, everything. And then if we just take all that, and and we've talked about this, if you go to any competitor's website and if they have any of those words, you have to cross it out. Um, really, a lot of times what makes us unique when we cross out all those things is us. Is a lot of times if we're a, a smaller business, what makes us stand out is our uniqueness. Like you're saying, we're all unique. So yes. there are ways to bring our personality to our brand. Yeah. And I think the brands, the bigger brands that stand out, have a way of making a personality for their brand. You know, when, when and there, there's a lot of tools that we use with our clients. But one of the things that I, I love to say is that the answer to why you really has nothing to do with you. And everything to do with what you can do for me if I'm That's your customer. And so, and so the differentiation is not so much about, you know, who you are and what you do and all of those wonderful things. The, the, the differentiator is what you do for me, what you bring to the table for me that is different than what your competitors bring to the table. So it's starting with the story and then figuring out how we tell that story. And in fact, I was, I, I came across something this week. You know, I'm, I'm usually looking for successes, but every so often I, I come across a huge fail when it comes to YU. And, and, uh, I think a few weeks ago we talked about Doritos for women. Right. Which, right. <laughs> I still think there's a way if they make them pink or something that women might. Oh yeah, I'd eat them if they were pink because that really appealed to me. But, you want pink powder on your fingers, not yeah, orange. But, like but what were they the thinking? Example, the example this week was Warby Parker. Um, and Warby Parker for April Fool's Day, and I did put the link in uh, under under the video. I see it. Uh, War for, for April Fool's Day, Warby Parker decided to um, do what turned out to be kind of a joke that went flat with Arby's. And it was because if you put Warby Parker and Arby's together, you get Warby. The, the, stay with me. I don't know why anybody <laughs> thought that was funny. But here's, here's the real point of the story. The word, because we should all have one word, the word that associated with Warby Parker is cool. Their entire brand is built on cool. And then if you look at the subchapters of their book, there's all kinds of things like authentic and transparent and all of these wonderful words. And Arby's? Not cool. Arby's is for hunters. Arby's is for like hunters. It, Oh, oh, yeah, they, they, they like on the whole side of the gun thing there. And, and so it was, it was a total blunder, uh, for Warby Parker to do anything with Arby's, regardless of the fact that somebody thought the, you know, putting those two names together would be cute. <laughs> um, and, it, and it got very little press and the press it did get and the social media buzz it did get was bad. Like it was people posting it with big question marks. And, and, uh, so check the link out. And the reason that I want to share this with people is, is what we have a responsibility to be thinking constantly about where our brand disconnects are. So where are your right. brand disconnects? And here's the thing, you know, in our business, our word is different. Dare to be different. We just, that's what our brand is all about. So we could drive ourselves nuts, making sure that every touch point experience was different. And Gina, you know, I do. Drive my <laughs> there aren't enough hours in the day to do them all. So if you're in neutral, that's fine. What would be a really 
bad thing for our business and our brand was would be to do something that is not just neutral, but so predictable that people would go, okay, that's a disconnect. So that's where we need to look at every touch point in our journey and think, are there any brand disconnects? And as we move forward, as we do all of these innovative things, you know, are, are we doing things that are consistent with our brand story that that remind people of those words as opposed to make people go, what? What? Well, it's That's interesting true. because this week Kirk sent me something that had Dunkin' Donuts had a campaign of win a pair of Dunkin' Donuts uh, running shoes. And they were selling running shoes. Dunkin' Donuts branded. And I was like, what? Like, are they trying to say if you eat Dunkin' Donuts, you better be running the calories off? But then I looked at their slogan is, their slogan is running run on Dunkin'. Yeah, so running on Dunkin'. That's always been trying to tie in the running shoes, which I thought are runners. Now, maybe I maybe runners. I I just look at and go, are runners their target audience or maybe their target audience wants to look like they're right. I just thought that was a weird one, too, Um, even though their their slogan running on Duncan. I thought, okay, who would wear Dunkin Donut shoes? Maybe. Um, So, yeah, I think we do have to look at. Is it congruent always? Anything. Yeah. Is it congruent with our brand? Um, and not just for congruent, making sure it's not a disconnect, an actual disconnect. Right. right. So that people go, you know, like, what the whatever, right? <laughs> right. That, that is neutral is okay. Disconnect. Which, which you were asking that question is what are your brand disconnects? And I think that is something interesting to look at, which causes you to evaluate every touch point in your organization, in that whole customer journey, look at every single, because we've talked about, I got that deodorant, native deodorant, and I got the email when I ordered this deodorant online, and it was this amazing marketing piece. It was just, to me, it was brilliant. But then the deodorant came, and it was kind of average. And I, I I was actually disappointed because... I really wasn't looking forward to getting deodorant in the mail. I was looking forward to this really cool packaging and experience because of the email. Um, And on the reverse side, Bombas socks I had ordered online and their video was really cool. And when their, when their packaging came, they followed up with some fun messaging. And I thought there is something to you. Maybe I look at it and go, I bet at native deodorant, they have a really cool person running their email and marketing and the rest of the company is kind of like, Hey, we're a deodorant company. I don't know. And what they haven't done is looked at the touch points in the journey to make sure that the story is being told over and over again, the same story. It's like all of a sudden the story stops in the middle and leaves people going, I want more of that story that I signed on for. Right. And I think that's an interesting thing to look at if your brand is attracting the right people. So, you know, uh, not everybody is going to want to work with me. And I'm fine with that. I'd rather repel the people who don't want to work with me. And I want to attract the people who do. But if people are attracted to you for something and then the story stops in the middle and they're like, oh, yeah, it's not followed through. um, You're right. There's a disconnect. Absolutely. Now, what's that tool you said you you wanted to share? Yeah, so I actually got an email from a company that I connected with on social, and um, it's called Bonjoro. So not Bonjourno, but B-O-N-J-O-R-O, Bonjoro. Not Bon Jovi. Yeah, not Bon Jovi, but Bonjoro. So maybe it was kind of the Arby's Warby Parker thing. Maybe Bon Jovi started Bonjoro and he was in France and yeah, I don't know. But um, uh, my Bonjoro is a, is a service you sign up for and you can tie it to your email service. So your CRM, um, whenever you can also tie it to your systems that anytime someone makes a purchase from your website, you'll get notified and you open up your app on your phone or on your computer, and you send an immediate video, a personal video. So when I 
connected with this guy. I got an immediate video from him and he was wearing a bear suit because that's their mascot. And they, they have a whole bunch of them, it turns out, and they'll have their whole team get in bear suits at times, but they make a video and it wasn't just a generic video. He was like, Hey, Gina, it's John. I just wanted to say, Hey, and thanks for connecting with us and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? How are they able to do it? So I signed on right away this week every day so i i tied it to my email service so a mailchimp anytime someone signs up on our, one of our email lists for they download something um, one of our lead magnets i get a notification immediately from bonjoro and it just says you have a bonjoro to do and i click on the to do and it opens up my video camera and it tells me the person's name and i can immediately send an a video and say hey it was just this morning i did one to annie who then joined our diy social group so shout out to you annie i i was like hey annie you know it's gina i just wanted to welcome you you know you could just leave a personal message and to get to know people and i thought what a cool way number one to stand out because how many lists do we get on and then we forget. So it's like, how do you? That's brilliant. Brilliant. And I'm super excited about it. Um, I don't and know how, how to keep up with it. Like to keep up with yeah, it. That would be the only thing. Yeah. But uh, right and now it's really cool. The, the video is goes right into the email. It, it's not click on it and it takes you somewhere else. It's right there in the email. Well, the email is coming from, well, because it opens up in Bonjoro. That's why I'm curious. Um, it's interesting because I'm doing, I just signed on this week. And after you send so many of them, then you get stats. So right now I don't have stats. Um, and so I want to see, I think yesterday I did 20 of them um, just because I know. And and what was interesting, um, that, that also was interesting to me. Well, it literally takes me 15 seconds to do one. Yeah. Now, you had to be video ready <laughs> all the time. Let's go, let's go to the vanity part of this. Let's get real. Um, if you're not video ready, I'm like, shoot, like I look like, you know, a wreck and I can't go on and do a video. So maybe the whole bear costume idea um, <laughs> came from women in their marketing department because I need something that's like a mask I can put on. And do. <laughs> um but I, I, yesterday I was like, oh my gosh, what was interesting is I started becoming aware of how many people are joining our email list in a day. And then it got me excited to, oh, I want to create a new lead magnet because I want to up my game. I mean, so it was kind of a really cool focus this week um, to do, but I loved it. And now what I'm curious is if anyone has gotten these, um, like I want to know the stats. Like, are they opening? It? Are they watching it? Is it creepy? Like, is there a creepy factor? Like, okay, well, you you not only I downloaded this, but now you know my name. But they put their name in my email contact list. So and I, I think I would also play a little bit of devil's advocate, and that would be that for me, I can't speak for anybody else. That right. would be a huge distraction for and, you during the day. Yeah, it, it would yeah. just be. The dings and the dongs and stopping to do a video would just mean that I'm I'm not focusing on. I think it's really cool. I think we just yeah. need to. And I'm assuming you don't need to do it right away. No, no, no. That's what I was gonna say. You can actually say, okay, at the end of my day, which gives you time to get. I love Heidi says that's what I thought. Not always video ready. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't have to um, do it right then. It just notify, and you can say notify me at the end of the day of all my to do's or notify me as this week because I was testing it. I was curious, like, okay, I want to try it and play with it. So you could do that and get video ready and everything else. Um, yeah. And Deb says, I see something similar on Twitter. I would pull your comments up here, but you know, it's weird. Something's going wonky with be live today because I don't, I'm not seeing your comments in be live. I'm only seeing them on Facebook. So I'm having to keep looking over here. I'd be live today. Yeah, I, I had, they've added a couple new features I noted today. And so I have a feeling there's something going on, but, um, but Deb says, I see something similar on Twitter. People are sending me personalized videos, thanking me for following them. And Deb, I tried to do that a couple weeks ago where I was sending video replies to people. So if they retweeted something, I would just, I, I would hit reply 
um, to the person and then you can just click live video and instead of typing a response, you just do a quick video, which I love that concept. And if you want to get more engagement on Twitter and you want people, you want to stand out to people, that definitely works because you're memorable all of a sudden to that person. Well, you'll but be memorable for a little while until everybody starts to until do it. Until everybody starts. Well, but to your point, Tony, it's like, is it sustainable? Yeah. And, and really, I, you know, the, the, there, there is so much that we could be doing on social media, all yeah. of us. And it's just really about how, how to use your time wisely. I mean, I love all of this stuff and I, I love, as you know, I love video and, and, but, uh, Boy, if I was doing that all the time. Well, and it's interesting because we had a conversation with a client, uh, you know, day before yesterday, I think it was, um, about their overall strategy for the year. And a lot of times people, their big strategy is I need more numbers. Like I really want to grow my community. And it's like, okay, that's awesome. However, I want to challenge everyone to say, how do we go deeper? with the real people. And Tony, you and I have done, you're doing this with your group. I mean, I just see the engagement. It's like, go deeper with the small numbers yes. because number one, that will grow to big numbers. But instead of focusing on grow big numbers, go deeper and get to know people. And I mean, I've been on this whole kick the last month of just really trying to get more intimate. And even in my um, my emails I'm sending out, I'm, my love letters is what I'm calling them. I need to write my love letter to my my subscribers and I'm sending out a love letter as if I'm writing a love letter to my best friend and I'm saying you know I want to get to know you and I love the fact that people are actually contacting me through email and Twitter and saying hey you told me to contact you and tell you two things that we have in common which I've loved that because I number one I do think that'll make me stand out and more yeah. memorable but to me yeah. it makes them stand out more memorable because you know, you it's totally, it's totally congruent with your brand too. So all of this video stuff that you're doing is totally congruent with your brand. You're the social media maven. And if you weren't on top of all of these new things, then there would be a huge disconnect. So everything True. that you're doing is totally on brand. That's less the case for the rest of us. I also think that, and, and this is why what you do is so brilliant. It truly depends who your target market is. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. target market does not want to know two things that we have in common. They, they really do not. And do I mean, I'm talking about my target you buyer. Your target buyer doesn't want to know you more? Oh, they may want to know me more, but they're not going to supply any personal information. About themselves, you're saying. About themselves. And and again, if I'm if I'm if I'm thinking of the entrepreneurial group that's in the group, then that's great. We're sharing all kinds of stuff. I did another post today when I was or yesterday when I was ruminating about something and and asked for some thoughts and, and I got some some great feedback. And that's what I, I think that place is 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 that's what makes that group so special for that entrepreneurial group. But but my CEO and VPs of sales and all of those guys on LinkedIn and I mean guys in a non-gender specific yeah. kind of way the peeps let, let's you know talk to me about two things you and I have in common <laughs> that, that's not on brand. and then send them a love letter Tony I think and they I'll will love I love <laughs> that's why yours is a love letter and mine is an insider's report and that's why <laughs> uh, yeah. they're both brand congruent now yeah. I just I just um I, I do. I really want to get this last. Can I can I squeeze this last yes, piece in yes. just because this I just found this morning. I often think that uh, I, I look I have about uh, I, I read voraciously and I, I, I like to say that I that I scan voraciously. So I have a bunch of reliable sources that come into my inbox every day. I am up at 530 scanning by quarter six. And uh, going through all of these things to try to find all these wonderful examples that I that I use in my business, and I like to think that the universe on Friday morning says this needs to be in Tony's yes. box yeah. she needs to share this on Wind Down this afternoon. And again, the link is in um, is is below the video. And I know Gina, a couple of weeks ago, you shared a video of a young lady who was singing her nice. resume or, or Page. something. Yes. So, but this goes one step further, and there's so many lessons in this one. So this is a guy, a copywriter, who wanted to get hired by Sprite. So one would think that he would use his copywriting skills and in some way demonstrate his copywriting skills. No. I mean, he sort of did. But what he did is he wrote a rap. He wrote a rap song. 
about Sprite and why he loves Sprite and why Sprite is so cool and why he wants to work for Sprite for this agency. And as I watched it, number one meets all the five S's that you don't even need to think about it. Perfect score almost. Okay. Right. Secondly, yes, he dared to be different. He did a music video and then that's, but there were so many other lessons in it. One, he talked about his copywriting skills, but his copywriting skills were nowhere in evidence. And I, I just saw another thing that um, I think uh, Denny's did with Solo for the new movie Solo, not a pancake in sight. And, and what it made me think, number one, is we are always so busy putting our our wares up in front and, and pushing what we do when, in fact, there's all kinds of way to connect to people. And it's refreshing, actually, if yeah. we're not pushing a product. Number two, we think all the time about why, why you, like I want my customers to know why you and what this video did brilliantly is he told them why them. Right. He, he wasn't focused on why, although there's a great bit in the song about all the things he could do. He was saying, I love you. I love Sprite. See? I wanted to work for Sprite all my life. And <laughs> it just, it made me think how often do we do that? Yeah. How often do we tell our clients why we want them to choose us because of how much we love them? Right. But it's just, it's this, it's this, it was just brilliant. It was just brilliant. So watch the video. I think there's lots of little lessons in there apart from the fact that it was great and it was innovative and it met the five S's and it was a great marketing thing. And, and he got hired. The moral of the story is he got hired by this. Hired. Um, to work on the Sprite account. He's dressed as a rapper. Uh, he, he, he has like limes and lemons hanging around his neck. It, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And another video that I didn't post yet, but I will, was by a financial institution. You know, there are all these new financial, I think they call them FinTech or FinTech or whatever it is, these new innovative financial institutions that aren't bricks and mortar. Um, but I'll post this video too, because it was it was a, a video of the remodel of a kitchen, except the, the kitchen was this big. Um, it wasn't till the very end of the video that they even mentioned the name of the company. And then it made this thing about small projects, big projects. You know, you can get a personal loan. But again, they weren't pushing their wares. Right. They were showing me the money in that and all pun intended. Right. They were showing me the benefit of what they could do for me, which goes back to where we started. It's got nothing right. to do with you. It's got to do with what you can do for me. And so in a minute and a half, I'm sitting there going, I can do that. I can, you know, remodel my kitchen. If I happen to be somebody who's looking for money to remodel my kitchen. And I'm, I'm guessing they will do a whole series with a bunch of different projects. Which so, is the whole Tide uh, Super Bowl concept. Yeah, they yes, never yeah, mentioned yeah. Tide. You know, it wasn't about Tide. It was about everything else going on yeah. and how they were evident there without being pushing their brand. Yes. And and in fact, I, the, the the CEO or, or whomever actually said this was the very first thing they did done for Tide that did not focus on stain removal. Yeah. Didn't well, focus it's, on stain removal at all. Well, so, it's interesting because there's a company called, I think it's just Gravy or gravy.com or get gravy maybe someone in the audience will know it's it's a company that basically um gets money for you that like when people sign on for membership sites and they don't pay and get yeah. gravy or it's it's not get, it's not get, yeah it's like a collection uh service yeah. that attaches so when somebody's credit card expires they get it for you instead of um you letting it lapse, but they were talking about how on their invoices, they put on their invoices, how much money they've saved you. I thought that was an interesting way to say, here's yeah. what we're doing for you. Yes. That helps you remember why you why love you us, why you chose, why us. Yeah, it's you know? a great example. You know, yeah. we, we always talk about, you want to remind your customers why they should do and continue to do business with you. Right. So people, every time I say an invoice is a touch point, people go, well, it's not really. It's But that company is using their invoice it as is. a touch point to remind their customers why they should continue to do business with them. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, again, every time you see those examples, don't brush those off. Examine them and see what can you do in your business with something simple like your invoice to make you stand out and remind your customers 
of how you help them, um, why you and reinforce it. You know, and, and back in, gosh, back in the days, 25 years ago, when I was in sales, we used to call that putting a feather in your cap. Because a lot of times you're doing a lot for your customers and they don't even know it. Know and it. if you don't put those on the invoice and put them as waived that fee, yeah. um, and it may seem weird to do that, but a lot of times, you know, we'll do things and just incorporate it. But if you put it there, waive the fee so they see, then they're reminded of, oh, that's yeah. why. Like no one else would do that. You know, things like that, I think could be a great touch point. And, and I think I think all of us need to look at ways that we can not just remind our customers why they do business with us, but why we're so excited about doing business with them. And you are a master at this. You are a master. We always get these little things from you that, well, they're not, they maybe, no, we get big things too. We get things. We get things from you in the mail. Um, and they're all over the place, but every time it reminds us that you are grateful for doing business with us. And I, I think it's something that we can all do so much better at, and it doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little creativity and, well, and thinking and of your response. thinking of the person, you know, it's kind of like one of those things of how do we personalize things to make it more, uh, I, it's more of that that love letter. I'm going to go back to my love. This is a love fest. We need to we need to be back in love with with our oh. customers and with people we work with and yeah. yeah. And 30 minutes has flown by once again. Now even this, without wine. Even it, without wine and this was really strange for me today. I I it says no comments, no reaction. It, no it is reaction. weird. And I'm seeing them on here. So thank you, D. And I'll, and what's weird about this is, um, oh, D says my screen is frozen. Anyone else? I don't know if anyone else, um, but Deb says email signatures can be cleverly worded as well to show off your skills and value. I love, Absolutely. like, I love my voicemail. When you call our main 800 number, we have a very unique voicemail set up and you can take a 30 second vacation. When you call my, my, cell phone you get a unique message my email signature line i'm always tweaking that um i think you've got to always look at all these things going what can we do different um okay oh d says it's back on what's bad is i can't scroll to see comments this is really a hard one so i, I apologize we're for some reason b live is not showing your comments on facebook i see them but as soon as it, they i can't scroll through them Right. Um, until after the live show is over. So, but lots yeah. of comments. Sarah, shout out to you. Sarah says, thanks, Tony and Gina. Exciting insights as always. Great show. Thank you, Sarah. Your, your seat, Sarah. Big love to you. Like I'm connecting with Sarah and learning about her all over. And I know Dee and Deb and, and Heidi, um, people who are always like, I'm always seeing learning about your awesomeness. So I think it's, um, we need to look at what is our awesomeness, really look at that within our brand, within ourselves, what makes us unique, and then bring that to the table more Absolutely. in the coming months. Absolutely. So Have very a fun. And everybody <laughs> D says, it's always fun not to drink with you. Cheers. Yes. And you know, it could be, Ginger ale, it could be wine. No one will know. No, it could, that's ginger ale. How can you tell? Because it's got little bubbles. Oh, oh now was... I can see 38 comments. All oh, of a sudden, all of a sudden. Oh, wow. All of a sudden, they all populated on here, too. Yeah, so all of a wow. sudden, I've, I've got, uh, although I, I don't know. Who, oh, great. There's Deb. I mean, there's D. D's comments. Comment. And yeah, Sarah. Sarah. Oh, like the end of the show, they all started populating. Yeah, something must have been glitchy in our system today and be live or something. So so have well. a wonderful weekend, everybody, and a great week. And next yep. Friday show is going to be special surprise, special surprise. So make sure you put it in your agenda. Tell other people. Uh, don't forget about the Facebook groups. Um, if you're in Gina's, join mine. If you're in mine, join Gina's. Really, they're very different conversations, but they're all congruent, and they and they just touch on different things. So yeah. I'm in Gina's. Gina's is in mine, and so mine is influential innovators. Uh, and I was going to say, we'll put those links in there, Influential Innovators. If you search for that in Facebook, you'll find her group. And DIY Social okay. is uh, my group. 
And Heidi, what is our awesomeness? <laughs> Heidi, that's right. Heidi, I know your awesomeness. You're awesome. Um, oh, Heidi's saying a link. What is a link to Tony's group? So we'll put that link in the comments area here. So um, influential innovators. So facebook.com slash groups slash influential innovators. It's yeah, a lot to spell. Influential innovators and it'll come up. Awesome. Come up. Okay. Thanks I got to join us, you guys. We love you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.